Hi viewers, today I will do another one of my comparison videos and this one will feature dive watches but only vintage style dive watches. Now most people when they do a comparison video they do maybe two or even three watches. Um, for some reason I end up started with two or three and then it grows and grows because I think oh I can't leave that out and I can't leave this out and this one has ended up being much more than two or three and it's going to be a comparison video containing eight watches and even then there will be some that have been left out but you can't include them all otherwise the video would be two days long so um, to start off with I'm going to show the watches introduce them all in alphabetical order so the first one will be the Certina DSPH200 then the Doxa Sub 300T and then we'll look at the Edox Delphin Fleet 1650 and then the amazing Eterna Contiki, the Super Contiki and then we'll take a look at the Mido Ocean Star Tribute the Oris 65 the Rado Captain Cook and finally the Seiko SPB143. Now these are all vintage style dive watches and they are also reissue dive watches so each one of them is a reissue of a watch from the 1960s nearly all of them are modelled on watches from the 1960s. So I'm going to do a quick comparison with them all and we're going to look at uh, just five different categories really and then I will give scores for each one. The first category will look at the overall design of the watch, then the second category will be the fit and finish, followed by the features of each watch, and then the value, is it good value or not, and finally we'll look at the vintageness of the watch, which I think is a, a word I've just made up, but I think it's a very suitable word. So, uh, first of all then, we will kick off with the Certina watch. Okay, before I start, I just want to uh, point out that this is not a review video. We will be looking at certain aspects of the watch and comparing them, but for an in-depth review, if you're interested in looking at much more information on each watch, then just, then just take a look at the channel. I have reviewed each and every watch in this comparison video. So if you want more information on each watch, just uh, scroll down the channel and have a look. Right, OK, so here we have the Certina DSPH200M. So first of all, we're going to look at the scores I've given for overall design. And uh, we'll start off with the Certina. These scores are out of 10. And I'll just go through each watch and give you the scores and then explain why I think they deserve that score. So the Certina I've given 6 out of 10 for design, the Doxa 8 out of 10, the Edox 8 out of 10, the Eterna 9 out of 10, the Mido 8 out of 10, the Oris 9, the Rado 8 and the Seiko 7. Okay so the Certina it's um, yeah, I feel a bit bad because it's got the lowest score for design on here, um, 6 which isn't terrible but um, is a bit average. I do, I mean, I have to say, I do like the overall look of it. I just wish it was smaller. I think because it's got this wide bezel, it just looks a little bit off with this size. It's 42 millimeter, 42.8 millimeter case, and um, the original was 40 millimeters. I just think uh, it would have been better at that size. This wide bezel just doesn't suit my my eye. Obviously these are my opinions if you feel differently fair enough. Yeah so um, for me it's just really the large size of the watch and the large wide bezel that I've marked it down for. So then uh, we look at the Doxa which I have given 8 out of 10. It's a marvellous design. It really stands out on its own. There's no other watch that looks like this. I love that bright orange dial and the uh, different effects of the 
brushed and polished surfaces. The cushion case and the beads are ice bracelet, it just overall they've really done well, it looks fantastic. So yeah. Eight out of ten for design on that one. The Edox, eight out of ten. Really good design. Nice narrow bezel, beautiful domed box, sapphire glass. I do like the shape of the case on this one and again some really nice polishing. And the Eterna, I've given this 9 out of 10. Um, and this one I suppose is the most similar to the Doxa than all the others. It has that cushion case and a very original vintage feel about it. I just personally really do rate this design. The all painted white hands and the markers, the distinctive hour hand, the lovely flat bezel, the yellow marker on the 12 o'clock position, it just all looks really cool. I think it's been done very well. The polishing is superb. And yeah, it just has a very distinctive, super cool look. And then the Mido, given this 8 out of 10. I love this design. Nice compact size, 40 millimeters, just over 40 millimeters. Got the beautiful box sapphire glass. I am a sucker for blue dials. Beautiful bezel. It's very highly polished, but uh, looks just right. And that orange second hand against the blue dial and the white markings just looks splendid, really good. And then we have the uh, Oris, 9 out of 10 for the design on this one. This really is a beautiful design, lovely domed crystal and the way the indices are applied is just beautiful. You've got the faux patina against the black dial, just a lovely colour combination that. The Rado Captain Cook, 8 out of 10 for design on this. Stunning green dial, beautiful. Blended with the dark green and the brighter green in the middle. Again, another domed crystal, looks fantastic. And finally, the Seiko. I've given this 7 out of 10. Not a bad look at all, it really is an attractive watch. I've just marked it down a bit because it's there's something a little bit bland about it I can't quite put my finger on. But you know, 7 out of 10 isn't a bad score. It is a, a very handsome watch. Okay, second category, the Certina. Gets a 6 out of 10 for fit and finish. Why is that so low? Well, a big chunk of that has to do with the bezel action. It's so there's so much play in it, which is disappointing for a watch at this class. I mean, it, that is a lot of play. So for that reason, the fit and finish does get marked down. I mean, it's not bad. The polishing is lovely. Bracelet is, is good too, but um, does get marked down for that loose bezel action. It's not great at all. Then the Doxa, we got 9 out of 10 for fit and finish on this. Not surprising considering it's the most expensive watch here. But the fit and finish is really fantastic. Great bezel action. Amazing beads of rice bracelet. Really well finished and a good clasp with the Good diver's extension. Just a, a very high quality watch all round. So then the Edox fit and finish for this is 8 out of 10. This is the only one that doesn't come on a bracelet, so I have marked it down a little bit for that. Does, this is not the original strap, but it does come with a very similar looking black leather strap which is not ideal for a diver's watch but apart from that the fit and finish really is very good beautiful polishing combination of 
highly polished there and the brushed finish on the top of the lugs. Great bezel action. Very solid, no play. So that's good. Then the Eterna fit and finish for the Super Contiki. Okay, 7 out of 10. It's pretty good. The bezel is a bit loose. It's a bit, when you tap it, there is a little bit of wobble on the top. The bezel insert feels a little bit loose itself, but uh, the action is very good. And the polishing is superb. The screw down crown feels great. So overall the fit and finish is pretty good, just gets marked down a little bit for that bezel. Then the Mido fit and finish for this is 8 out of 10. It's really classy, really beautiful polishing, great bezel, really lovely, no play at all. Nice clicks, good screw down crown with crown guards. Yeah, not bad at all. And then the Oris fit and finish for that is also nine. Beautifully finished. The polishing is wonderful. Lovely, really well done. Nice crown. Very slick. And a nice smooth bezel action too. And then the Rado fit and finish again nine. This really is finished to perfection almost. It's just wonderful. Great polishing, beautiful ceramic bezel. Again, a great action. Nice screw down crown. The bracelet, a beads of rice bracelet as well, just Beautiful, lovely, and the clasp is amazing. Really excellent fit and finish on this watch. And finally, the Seiko. Fit and finish for this is eight. Has a great bezel, really very smooth and quiet as well. Lovely ceramic insert, brushed ceramic. Screw down crown is super slick. The bracelet is not bad for a Seiko, it's a pretty good bracelet, not the best one here but uh, it's not bad at all. And of course you've got some amazing polishing on this watch. The high end Seikos are so well polished, they really are. So that's the fit and finish category, now we'll look at the overall features of the watch. And here the Certina, I'm afraid it just gets a 6. And the main reason is because the they've chosen to go with the Hesalite crystal on the uh, watch um, rather than a sapphire one, trying to keep it faithful to the original I suppose, but the quality isn't nearly as good as sapphire and uh, sometimes it does look a little bit cloudy or milky in certain lights. Um, actually, the loom on the Certina is pretty good. It is powered by the ETA Powermatic 80 though, which is good. Um, but apart from that, there's no there's no outstanding features on here really to write home about. So it's all a bit average. The features on the Doxa, I've given this 9 out of 10. It has a whopping water resistance of 1200 metres which is by far the largest rating of any of these watches here. Here's a tool watch. The bright orange dial on this one is for super legibility. You've got the rotating bezel, which has your standard markings on the inner dial for the minutes, but you've got the no decompression 
scale as well on the outer dial. The loom is not bad, could be better. Delphin Fleet 1650 has a beautiful sapphire domed crystal. It also comes with a day date complication. The loom on the Edox is uh, okay, it's not brilliant, but uh, not bad. And it does have crown guards as well. The features on the Eterna, I've given this 8 out of 10. ETA movement, 200 meters water resistant. The loom on the Eterna is uh, pretty good. And the bracelet, that has a cool feature. Quite a unique method of uh, fastening the bracelet there. Mido, the Mido gets 8 out of 10 on features. Again, got a lovely sapphire crystal, crown guards, 200 meters water resistant, and also has a day date complication as well. The loom is okay, but uh, could be a bit better. It's a fairly average kind of loom, it's nothing special at all. And the bracelet is great and comes with. Very good diver's extension. The Oris, features for the Oris, I've given just a 6 out of 10, nothing special really. The loom on the Oris is um, okay, it's not bad. And the water resistance rating is just 100 meters, which is the lowest one here. Dorado. It's 7 out of 10 on features. Has a decent modified ETA movement. 200 meters water resistant. Ceramic bezel. The loom on the Rado is a bit disappointing. It's okay, but uh, nothing special. Uh, a good bracelet. Really nice beads of rice bracelet, but doesn't have a diver's extension. And the clasp is very attractive and thin, but there are no micro adjustments either. So uh, just 7 out of 10 on that one. And then the Seiko, I've given that 8 out of 10 on features. 200 meter water resistant. Beautiful brushed ceramic insert on the bezel. Obviously the loom on the Seiko, well you take it for granted that uh, a Seiko dive watch will, has, will have good loom. And this one is no exception. The loom is really great on this watch. And a good decent bracelet with with the diver's extension as well. So 8 out of 10 for that. Next we come to overall value of the watch. So the Certina scores quite well here, giving this 8 out of 10. It is the uh, cheapest watch here. It retails around about $900. And uh, that's a pretty good price for what you get. So I've given that 8 out of 10 on value. The Doxa, that is an expensive watch, just under 2000 Some places sell it for more than 2000 so um, it is expensive. And uh, for that reason, I've given it 6 out of 10 on value. The E-Dox, again, is, is quite expensive for what you get. That's around about $1,800, so I've given that uh, 7 out of 10 on value. The Eterna, that one again, retails for around about $1,900. But it is a, a very original watch, so I've given that 7 out of 10 on value. And the Mido Ocean Star, the Mido Ocean Star Tribute. Well, I've given that 9 out of 10 on value because after the Certina it's the next cheapest and it is around about $1,000 but it really packs a punch for that price. There's so many good things about this watch and $1,000 is a really good price for this. The Oris uh, on value, given that a 6 out of 10, it is quite expensive. It's around about $1,800. And uh, 
just lacks a couple of the features some of the more expensive watches have or even some of the less expensive watches have so value for money on this isn't fantastic at that price the Rado giving it 7 out of 10 on value it is again quite expensive around about $1900 and yeah I mean it is a great watch great fit and finish but like most of the other watches here it doesn't have any in-house movement so there's nothing special there so just a fairly average 7 out of 10 for value the Seiko well it's the only one here that does have an in-house movement the uh, 6R35 which is, is great um, and I have given this 7 out of 10 because it is still quite expensive at $1,400 and there are a lot of good things about this watch but it is let down a little bit by the bracelet it's not bad when you compare it to other Seiko watches but when you compare it to some of the other watches here it is a little bit rattly and uh, could be better so I've marked it down a little bit for that so overall value on that 7 out of 10 okay lastly we come to the vintageness of the watch which I think is quite important considering these are vintage style dive watches so the Certina well I've given this 9 out of 10 it really does look very vintage it's very faithful to the original which was first launched in 1967 so yeah good marks for the vintageness on that one and next up the Doxa again high scores here for vintageness this was originally launched the sub 300 was originally launched in 1969 and it is almost exactly like the original it really does have a vintage vibe about it and yeah is a very good reissue of the original so that gets 9 out of 10 the edox delphin fleet 1650 and uh, this original one was originally launched in 1961 um, if you look at my review of this watch you'll see a bit more information on the history of this it has one of the most interesting stories of all these watches here and it does have a real vintage look about it with that narrow bezel and the domed crystal and it is very similar to the original but I've marked it down a little bit because it's quite a big case size of 43 millimeters which isn't so vintagey so for this one I've given it 7 out of 10 so next is the Eterna Super Contiki how vintage does this look well that's a really vintage looking watch with the mesh bracelet the cushion case those uh, sword hands with that paddle shaped hour hand and all the white markings and very similar to the original which was launched in uh, 1973 surprise surprise considering this is called the Super Contiki 1973 but yeah that original was I think it's the only one here from the 70s actually but uh, yeah vintage really vintage looking and I've given that 10 out of 10 for vintageness next the Mido Ocean Star Tribute again very similar to the original still has that small case size which is great the original uh, Mido Ocean Star of this type there were quite a few different ocean stars but this particular one there's not a lot of information but as far as I could see in my research it was launched in 1961 but this has a fantastic vintage vibe too nice small size you've got the white markings on the dial those stick shaped hands a sort of mesh style bracelet really does feel very vintage so that one gets 10 out of 10 as well next uh, the Oris not a bad uh, reissue 
which uh, the original one was launched in 1965. But again, it's quite a big case size at 42 millimeters, so uh, it does get marked down a little bit for that. But nice narrow bezel, which I think a vintage star dive watch should have a narrow bezel. Boxed crystal. The bracelet has rivets in it as well, which is like the original, and it does have a good overall vintage feel, but just gets marked down a little bit for the case size. So that one gets um, 8 out of 10. Then next is the Rado, the Captain Cook. Again, a faithful reissue of the original, which was launched in 1962. And really does look vintage with those uh, distinctive painted markers on the dial. And the boxed sapphire glass. And the beads of rice bracelet. The clasp has a really nice high quality vintage look to it. Um, this also has a fairly big case size at 42mm, but it doesn't feel that big because it's very thin and the bezel slopes inwards, the dial being that convex shape as well. It just all feels very compact and the bracelet does taper as well, so this really does have a great vintage feel about it and I've given this 10 out of 10 for that. And lastly the Seiko, well there's been quite a few reissues of this which is based on the 62 MAS which was launched in 1962 and this does look similar, not uh, exactly the same but it does share a lot of similarities and yeah so it does feel quite vintage but there's a modern feel about it as well so I've marked that down a little bit to uh, 7 out of 10 for vintage feel on that one. So that concludes the score section of this video and uh, we've had a look at each category. So there is a winner and I will go through and we'll take a look at that right now see which one has come on top and it did surprise me a little bit actually when I added it all up but here we go so as you can see here the overall winner is actually the Mido Ocean Star Tribute and then uh, not far behind in second place is the Doxa Sub 300T and then with the same score in joint third place you've got the Rado Captain Cook and the Eterna Super Contiki 1973 so that's it. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of you out there that are saying I'm going to be looking at some watches that have not been included in this list. But as I said before, when I've done these types of videos, it's just not possible to include every watch. There are some ones that I would love to have included, but just can't, just not possible. So this is the result of a comparison of just these eight watches doesn't mean anything, it's just a bit of fun, you're more than welcome to disagree with these opinions. But hopefully some of you have found it helpful, if you're thinking of getting any one of these watches I do hope this has been of use to you. So that's it, that's the conclusion of the comparison of eight vintage star dive watches. I really do hope you found this interesting. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.